Just like Reese's peanut butter cups, there is no right way to fantasy football. And so while most leagues use the same standard settings, there's plenty of fun ways to mix things up as well. Some of these leagues will require just as much, if not more, prep than traditional standard fantasy leagues, but others are just a bit of fun on the side. And one caveat on all of these, I do have suggested scoring for most of these leagues, but obviously take them and change them how you think is necessary. In an elimination league, the team with the lowest score at the end of each week is just completely kicked out of the league. Boom, gone. And that eliminated team's players will then become free agents. I've played in this kind of league a few times, and it's pretty awesome. Well, unless you get knocked out early, then it's kind of lame. And because of that, I would not make this the only league that I play in. One key note on strategy, weekly waiver pickups become a huge part of this league. So keeping with a standard serpentine non-resetting order is intriguing because it's a big risk to pick someone up and then lose your top spot on the waiver wire. On the other hand, you can spice things up a little bit by making the waiver wire pickup order reset each week in reverse order of the number of points scored that week. This would make the ideal spot to finish in each week actually to have the second lowest number of points you know, if, if you really like to live on the edge. For simplicity's sake, you can set this league up to have normal head-to-head matchups, even though you know the outcomes don't matter. Even after they're eliminated, even teams will kind of remain in the league, but just with a blank roster in order to keep an even number of teams. You don't usually see many roto leagues in football. A rotisserie league just means that there are no head-to-head matchups and points are added up for the whole season to determine the standings. But it can come in handy sometimes. If you've ever had the second most points in your league in any given week and still lost because you just happened to be playing the team that was on top that week, you know what I mean. This league's standings are determined by awarding a team for winning their head-to-head matchup, but also for finishing with a higher number of points relative to the whole league. So each head-to-head matchup earns one point for the winning team. Ties are worth a half, I guess, if that ever happens. And then in addition, each team finishing in the top half by overall points that week is also awarded one point. So the top five teams for a 10-team league. Another way to accomplish this would be to have every team play every other team every week. Although it might be a little less confusing to just do a straight roto league at that point. In a poacher league each week, the winner of each head-to-head matchup can select a player on the team he has just beaten to join his team. In return, he must trade a player of the same position to his opponent, and this player that he trades must have been on his roster during the matchup. He can't just pick up a bad player off the free agent list and then trade him immediately. This weekly trade would be mandatory for all the matchups, and it must obviously be accepted by the losing team. If this league is left unchecked, it could quickly allow the rich teams to get richer and just destroy those that happen to lose in the first few weeks, which is why I like to refer to this league as the American Economy League. There's a few ways to combat this. You can either eliminate or severely limit bench spots. This will keep the free agent list stocked of stronger players and will also mean that while the winning team will have to trade one of their players, he'll still be of a reasonable talent level. You can also allow each losing team to protect a certain number of players on their roster. If the balance is still out of whack, though, you could go with what I think is more intriguing. This is the reverse poacher league, or sometimes called the Bernie Sanders league. This is similar to the poacher league, only now it's the losing team in each matchup that gets to choose the player for the trade. So even if you lose, you know that your team is going to get better for the next week. If you're going to have playoffs in this league, though, then you can flip it around for that one or two matchups and let the winner choose the trade in that scenario. A predictions-only league would take very little amount of your time, relatively speaking, and put your prediction skills to the test. The rosters are standards. There is no bench. Once everyone drafts, rosters are locked for the whole season, and may the best man win. If you can only find a few friends interested in another league, why not use a lots of starters league? There's no reason to allow a bunch of players to sit unused. So each team in this league would have four each of quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, flexes, and defenses. Scoring totals will be extremely high week to week relative to regular leagues, so you can't have too many weak spots. If you don't want to get too extreme, here's a few quick ways to alter any traditional league and maybe shake things up just a little bit. Have two flex players. After my league tried this the first time, everyone loved it. We'll never go back. Having two quarterbacks on your roster has become a fairly popular tweak because quarterbacks tend to score the most points in traditional formats, and they can really boost a team even if a few other players are having a poor day. 
not having any bench is a personal favorite of mine. I don't want to draft guys and then just watch their points get wasted on the bench. Or if you're not quite ready to go so hardcore, maybe just have two bench spots so you can keep your top guys on their bye weeks risk-free. Either way, you're really going to have to weigh free agent pickups. At first, a lot of people are afraid of getting rid of kickers, and then when they try it, then they love it. Another kicker variation is to switch kick point values up, because obviously not all kicks are created equally. As for my recommendation, if you can, use .1 points for each yard made of a field goal. So a 31-yard field goal would earn you 3.1 points. If your site can't support that, though, for kicks 30 yards or under, 3 points for a make, minus 3 for a miss, between 40 and 50 yards, 4 points for a make, and negative 1 for a miss, and 50 yards or over, 5 points for a make, and no points for a miss. Kickers can now become pretty valuable. Everyone knows that the most exciting part of a game is touchdowns, so why not dedicate a league to them? A scoring-only league would only factor in scoring plays. In this case, larger-than-usual rosters are probably a good thing to have. The opposite of a scoring-only league is a yards-only league, and anyone who's ever had their running back rush the ball down the field all the way, only to have a fullback fall over into the end zone for a one-yard touchdown run and steal all your points, you get it. This league would allow you to eliminate the vultures. A punters only league is a league that I have done, and not to brag, but I did win. This league was born out of an idea that would make fourth downs relevant to fantasy owners, and at best make someone in a crowded bar yell at a punter on a TV while the other people give him funny looks. Each team consists only of two punters. If you hate long drafts, this is the league for you. And scoring is all head-to-head. -head. It admittedly is a pretty silly league. There are no bench spots, so a major decision is do I drop a good punter on their bye week and risk losing him? As strange as it may sound, I do believe there's a legitimate strategy to win this league, but I'm not going to tell you what that is. These next two are a bit more in-depth. The alternate points league is one that I found on Reddit a few years ago, so I'm just going to link it in the description. The main feature here is that it actually has different values for certain actions depending on which position a player is. So the guy who came up with it includes his reasons for everything in the description the only drawback is most fantasy sites cannot handle this degree of customization. So to my knowledge, the only two sites that can are Fleet Flicker and Fantrax. The Expected Points Added or EPA Points League is another one I'm just going to link to from Deadspin. It's actually based on the amount of expected points added by each particular action in a football game. Think football saber metrics. They describe reasons for everything in their article as well, so I'm not going to re-bore you with them here. Finally, some leagues do include individual defensive players in their leagues. These are called IDP leagues, but why not just make defensive players the only focus? So this would eliminate all offensive players from your league, and point totals would look something like this. Hopefully one of these will pique your interest. Remember, you don't always have to play fantasy football for money, so why not give one of these a try with a group of your friends just for the fun of it? If you don't think that you can trash talk in a league based solely on punters, you are mistaken.